أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of the Almighty God the compassionate, the merciful the one who has created everything in utmost perfection and may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon his pure and beloved messenger the peak of his creation, the symbol of humanity the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad and his immaculate progeny of the Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them especially the leader of our time the awaited savior Al-Imam Al-Mahdi Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajah may Allah hasten his reappearance and make us all amongst his sincere and dedicated servants my respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. It is truly my great honor and my great privilege to be united with you after three years. I know it has been a difficult three years with the pandemic crisis, with the challenges that came with the pandemic. But we are infinitely grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. It was a challenge, but we learned also many lessons from the pandemic. So we are thankful to Allah for protecting you, for protecting us, and for uniting us again in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is describing the descent of of the first modern human being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this command minha. descend from it from that heaven now there's going to be a trial there's going to be some enmity Satan was also commanded to descend because he was able to mingle in the heavens but after his attempt to deceive Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commanded him to come to the earth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that in this earth, you will have a fixed time. In this earth, you will have an abode. وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٌ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حين. I will give you a fixed time. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us how the modern human race came to earth. Today when you ask people, when you ask those who are secular, how is it that human beings achieved what they have achieved today? How did we get here? You find that you don't get a satisfactory answer. Today you find people telling you, that human beings got here as a result of some evolutionary accident. This planet somehow formed based on millions of coincidences and then somehow mysteriously the first life evolved on earth and then you have the flourishing of life, animals, plants, until we come to the human being today, we just descended from previous species and we don't really have a purpose. Without religion, what is the purpose? Human beings are just continuing this random event called evolution. But you don't really find purpose in this life, in this world. But in the beautiful religion of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that I have a plan for you. There is purpose. Don't think that you just ended up here on earth by accident without any divine power guiding you. You think you just came here by accident? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have a plan now. I installed a representative called Adam. He represents me. He's my first prophet. There is now a plan with the modern human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares to us what this plan is. Now in our discussion tonight, we want to see 
does history and does modern science confirm that since Adam السلام, descended on earth, something new and unique happened? Because whatever religion teaches us, make no mistake that science and history confirm it. There is nothing in our Quran, nothing in the teachings of Ahlul Bayt السلام, that's not confirmed by science, that is not confirmed by history. So when we look at history, what do we see happening the last 10,000 years? This is a very important question. And then we'll see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who inspired modern civilization through his prophets. Our religious teachings tell us that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Prophet Adam, there were human-like figures before Prophet Adam alayhi salam. I'll share with you a few interesting hadiths about this. According to one hadith that a Shaykh al Mufid narrates in the book Al Ikhtisas, it's a very long, lengthy, interesting hadith. Basically, the Prophet sent a letter to the Jews of Khaybar, inviting them to join the religion of Islam. So they hesitated whether he was truly a prophet or not or they just wanted to make up an excuse. So they said, let's send a representative. We will send Abdullah ibn Salam. Go and interrogate this man. He says, I gathered hundreds of questions to ask him from our books, from our scriptures. Go and ask him. If he has the answer to all of your questions, then indeed he is a prophet. So Abdullah ibn Salam comes, he asks the prophets many questions. As Shaykh al-Mufid narrates some of those questions. Now some of them were just technical. Maybe they just wanted to know if he's aware of the Jewish history. For instance, Abdullah ibn Salam, amongst the questions that he asked the Prophet he tells him which place on earth has seen the sun only once. The sun shined on it only once. They asked the Prophet Quickly the Prophet said, it's that place where Prophet Musa السلام, split the sea. When he split the sea, the sun shined on the floor of the sea. That is the only time that that floor saw the sun. This was a question that they asked Rasulullah Another question that he asked the Prophet He told him, tell me about a messenger, Rasul, that God has sent. He's neither an angel, He's neither a human being, he's neither a beast. Which Rasul, which messenger from God is this? Quickly the Prophet ﷺ stated, it is the Ghurab, the raven or the crow that Allah sent to show Qabil how to bury the body of his brother Habil. So he, they would ask the Prophet questions like that. Amongst the questions that Abdullah ibn Salam asked the Prophet ﷺ, he tells him, inform me. Before human beings lived on earth, who lived on earth? The Prophet said the Malaika, the angels. He said, and before the angels, he said the jinn, they fully inhabited the earth. He asked him, okay, before and before the jinn, he said also Adam, human-like figures. Then this man, this Jewish man asked the Prophet ﷺ, give me a timeline. What timeline are we talking about? The Prophet ﷺ states that between the jinn and the previous human-like figures, there existed a period of two million years. Alfay alf am. In Arabic, alfay alf means two thousand by one thousand. That is two million years. Today, when you read these scientific discoveries that they discovered a skeleton that belongs to a human-like figure that goes back to three million years, this is confirmed by our hadith, subhanAllah. Everything that science discovers is in line with our religious teachings. There is nothing that science contradicts in the Holy Quran and in the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhimussalam. Another hadith is narrated by a Shaykh al-Saduq. He quotes Al-Imam Al-Baqir 
speaking about the previous Adamites. He tells his companion, he tells him before you modern human beings, seven rounds of Adamites came to earth. But you are not from them. They were different. You come from the prophet Adam. All human beings today, you come from prophet Adam alayhisalam. But there were seven rounds of human-like figures before you. So our beautiful religious teachings acknowledge that there were human beings who basically resemble the modern human being in their physical appearance who existed on earth. So now we want to see what happened since Prophet Adam salam came. But the question is, when did Prophet Adam descend on the earth? The Quran does not give us a, a timeline, right? This is something we have to fetch from our hadiths. When you analyze the hadith of the Ahlul Bayt salam, you come to the conclusion that Prophet Adam salam was very recent in our history. As recent as eight to nine thousand years ago. Not millions of years ago, eight to nine thousand years ago. Al Ayashi narrates an interesting hadith in his tafsir from Al Imam al Sadiq. Al Imam al Sadiq was told that people say the age of planet Earth is seven thousand years. The Imam said, No, that's nonsense. It's a lot more than that, it's not seven thousand years. Then the Imam السلام, states when Allah created Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determined for Adam and his progeny 10,000 years till the day of judgment. Allah has determined 10,000 years. Then the Imam السلام, in this interesting hadith, he says, وَمَضَى مِنْ ذَلِكَ سَبْعَةُ آلَافْ عَامْ وَمِئَتَانْ And 7,200 years have passed since Adam a.s. When did the Imam say this? 1300 years ago. So at 1300 to 7200, what do you get? 8500. According to this narration, Prophet Adam existed 8500 years ago, which is extremely recent in our modern history. Some people have the impression that he lived maybe millions of years ago. But when you analyze our hadiths, it's actually very, very recent. Also, when you look at the hadiths that tell you the gap between prophets. For instance, Prophet Nuh السلام, comes a thousand years after Prophet Adam. And then Prophet Ibrahim السلام, after X amount of years. When you add all of those years together, you end up with seven to eight thousand years. And that is truly fascinating. And here you see the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, what happened in the last 8,500 years? No evolutionary scientist can explain to you the explosion of civilization in the last 8,000 years. When you look at the history of the planet, you see evolution, right, progressing in incremental steps, very slowly. Every 500,000 years, something happens. Every 1 million years, you've got something significant evolving. But then when you come to the last 8,000 years, you see civilization exploding. What explains that? How is it that the human being started to build these vast civilizations in such a short amount of time? Religion gives you the answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, I inspired them with the knowledge. Adam alayhi salam had all the knowledge. And he shared a lot of his knowledge with his progeny. You see that human beings, when did they start to cultivate grains, fruits, plant them? 8,000 years ago. The first archaeological record of grapes being cultivated in farmlands is 6,500 BC. That's 8,500 years ago, which is exactly you know, compatible with the time frame of when Adam السلام, descended to the earth. According to one of our hadith, when Adam السلام, descended to the earth, Jibra'il السلام, brought to him all the seeds that human beings need to live on. All the seeds that human beings need. 
He gave him a handful. He told him here, you and your progeny, you will need this. Subhanallah, in, in the history of the planet, before 8,000 years, there is really no record of human beings cultivating wheat, barley, grains, fruits on such a mass scale. This happens in the last 8,000 years. Is that a coincidence? What happened in the last 8,000 years? Why do we see this rapid pace of evolution, this rapid progress, what explains it? Religion tells you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now decided to bring a prophet who has the full intellect guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what happened during the last 8,000 years. Writing, do you know when writing flourished on the planet? When did human beings learn how to read and write? Do you know it's as recent as 8,000 years ago? According to archaeological evidence, the earliest records of actual complex writing that they can find is the year 6000 BC, around 6000 BC in Mesopotamia, which is modern day Iraq. Now look at our religious teachings. They tell you the first prophet who officially taught people how to read and write is who? Which prophet? Prophet Idris alayhi salam. Prophet Idris alayhi salam lived in Mesopotamia around that time frame. Is this a coincidence? Everything that humanity needed was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to cultivate the lands? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired us. How to read and write? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired us. That's why you recite in Surah Iqra' Bismi Rabbika Alladhi Khalaq, Surah Al-Alaq, Iqra' wa Rabbuka Al-Akram Alladhi Allama Bil Qalam. Read in the name of your Lord. He taught you how to write with the pen. Allah gave you that knowledge. Allah inspired you and He gave you that knowledge through prophets, such as Prophet Idris alayhi salam. It is this pen that gave rise to civilizations. Without this pen, there would be no civilization. Subhanallah. Look at the simplicity of the creation of God that gives you complexity. When you see a huge skyscraper today that represents our modern civilization, realize that this skyscraper would not be standing if it weren't for the pen. Visualize a pen next to it. It's this pen that allowed human beings to exchange their knowledge, to learn from each other's experiences, and to establish powerful civilizations. It's this pen. And Allah says, Allama bil qalam. I am the one who taught you human being to write with the pen. You think this existed before Prophet Adam Islam? Show us the archaeological evidence. There is no record of it. I taught my prophets to write and they taught you how to write. It's all inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So something amazing happened the last 8,000 years. You can only make sense of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through religious teachings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who inspired us. He gave us the tools in order to establish the civilizations that we see today. Now, you might think that the human being is naturally evolving and he's getting smarter. We're getting bigger brains, right? Well, guess what? What do you know? In the last 10,000 years, the average brain of the human being has shrunk. It has not grown. Subhanallah. Historically, yes. The size of the brain would become bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Through some process of evolution. We do acknowledge that there is evolution in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's purposeful evolution based on a delicate system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. So yes, the fossil record shows you that the human brain throughout the you know, centuries and millennia does grow. It is shown in the fossil record. But the last 10,000 years, the human brain has shrunk. It is smaller than 30,000 years ago, 40,000 years ago. And yet you see this rise in civilization. What explains that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who inspired. Everything we have is from Allah and His prophets. Many times, people in our society today, we feel arrogant. We think that we human beings, you know, just through exploration, we discover many things. How did your civilization get here? It would not come here without the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. What did Allah inspire him to do? Allah 
mentions that in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him to make an armor to shield him from what? From iron. Before Prophet Dawood humanity did not have the technology to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired Prophet Dawood at the very beginning of the Iron Age in order to take iron and to mold it and to make a shield out of it. And that's truly fascinating. Everything you have is from Allah. Even the knowledge and the science and the technology today that you have, you couldn't achieve it if Allah did not inspire humanity with knowledge through His prophets. This is something that we must acknowledge because it will allow us to see a sense of purpose. Talk to the average person today. They tell you there's no purpose. Life is just evolving randomly. We don't even know where we're going. Allah says, no, I have a plan. Adam is my Khalifa. I have a plan for you, humanity. How many more signs do you want to see? Don't you see something change the last 8,000 years? Don't you see the rise of civilization, growing crops, learning how to read and write? Why do you turn a blind eye to all of these divine signs? These are signs that now I'm inspiring my prophets. They are my representatives. What proof do you need more than that? And then there's something that has baffled and puzzled scientists today. It's what's called the identical ancestors point. I encourage all of you to study what this is. Go and research it tonight. You will be baffled. These scientists who tell you all human beings today descended from apes, right? Through the common theory of evolution that many are advocating, especially some atheists who want to reject the existence of God. They struggle with an idea that if today all human beings evolved from those apes, human-like figures millions of years ago, our common identical ancestor should be way far back in history, right? Because if all these people evolved from someone, you know, a million years ago, you should find the same parent, the same set of parents that today everyone on earth descends from to be way back in history. You'd expect that to be a million years ago, 500,000 years ago, right? And then you could say all people today go back to those two people. They flourished from that tribe. But through, through modern technology, by using computer software to analyze family trees, and by doing genetic testing, scientists have discovered that everyone on earth today goes back to the identical ancestor 4,000 years ago. Between three to 5,000 years, on average 4,000 years ago. How do you explain that? What happened 4,000 years ago? Why is it that everyone today on earth, whether you're in the West or in the East, whether you're in Asia, in the Middle East, in North America, South America, why do we go back to the same parents 4,000 years ago? What explains that? When you look at the religious aspect, you see subhanAllah everything falling into place. Because our human history is very recent. And then we had the flood of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, right? Prophet Nuh existed about 5,000 years ago. And that tells you that all human beings today, they flourished after him. Because others flooded and they died. And then humanity continued after Prophet Nuh salam. Everything the Quran tells you is confirmed by modern science and by modern history. I truly invite you to investigate this identical ancestors point. Read it. Why is it so recent in our history? What explains it? How come everyone today on earth, 8 billion people, they go back to the same ancestor as recent as 4,000 years ago? The theory of evolution cannot explain that. It has to be much farther back in history for it to make any sense. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that He is the one who created this human race from Adam alayhi salam, from the Prophet Adam alayhi salam, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a purpose for us. See these signs coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't say, I don't have a purpose. I do have a purpose. And then my dear brothers and sisters, for those of you who sometimes struggle with your iman, with your faith, you're going through a crisis. During the pandemic, many people were confused. The rates of depression were very high the last two years. The rates of suicide were very high the last couple of years. Why? 
because people could not make sense of the global crises that were happening. So much confusion existed out there in our societies. Anytime you're confused, you're doubtful. Sometimes people t you know, tell me, say, I don't really know if God's with me. Is he really there? How can I feel his presence? Sometimes I feel like he's abandoned me. He's left me if he's there somewhere. Anytime you have a doubt, remember this hadith, Man arafa nafsah faqad arafa rabbah. Just inspect your creation and inspect your body. Look at the delicate way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised your body. You'll know you have a creator who knows exactly what, what he's doing. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ You don't need to go far to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just inspect your body. See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala positioned your different body parts, your different organs. Is this something that would just come out of randomness? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, just look at your own fingers. You'll see the miracle of my creation. Subhanallah, you know the human face? Try to rearrange any aspect of it and you'll see how life would be miserable. If you switch the nose and the mouth, imagine if your creation was such that your nose was below your mouth. You would not really enjoy the iftar that you're about to have soon inshallah. Why? Because one of the joys of food is when you smell the food. When you're hungry, there's nothing more pleasing to your nose than what? than the fragrant smell of food. It's even better than the best cologne when you're hungry, right? <laughs> if your nose was below your mouth, you couldn't really enjoy this na'mah. Imagine if your eyes were at your lower jaw, right? Your mouth here, your nose here, and then your eyes in your lower jaw. Every time you'd eat, you would get a migraine because your you know, uh, eyes would go through a nice earthquake every time you would eat. Imagine. The rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's created you in a perfect condition. How many signs do you want? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has created this body in a way that reminds you to worship Him and keep away from sins. In one beautiful hadith, hadith Qudsi. In this beautiful hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. He tells him, Yabna Adam. Convey this message to the people. Ya ibn Adam, inna za'aka lisanuka ila ma harramtu faqad a'antuka bitabaqataini fa'atbiq. O son of Adam, if you feel tempted to say that which is unlawful, that which is haram, ghiba, backbiting, namima, causing fitna between the people, ruining someone's reputation, saying inappropriate words. One of the sins that we commit with our mouths is what? With our tongue. Is saying profanity. These days you see that it's very common in the culture of the youth when they're sitting together, right? They use obscene and profane words as if it's normal. And it's cool. The more profanity you use in your speech, the more cool it is, right? You'll be the cool kid in your class, the cool kid in your neighborhood, the cool kid on TikTok and Instagram and social media if you use inappropriate words. Every inappropriate word that you use is haram. And it blocks the dua from being answered. The angels do not raise the dua of a person who speaks profanity. Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunuba allati tahbisu dua is one of them. To use these words. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, if you feel tempted and your tongue wants to say something that's haram, I have helped you, I have aided you with two layers, two lips in order to imprison your tongue. Look at the tongue, the anatomy of the tongue, subhanallah. It's like Allah has put your tongue behind bars. Your teeth look like prison bars, right? Just elongate them a little bit. Elongate them a little bit, you'll see how they look like prison bars. And then out of outside, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you lips. Allah says, just look at your anatomy. I'm teaching you through the anatomy of your body to be careful. Lock this tongue only when it's useful, unlock it. Otherwise, keep it locked at all times. And then he says to Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, Ya ibn Adam, wa inna za'aka basaruka ila ba'd ma harramt. 
فقد أعنتك بطبقتين فأطبق and if you feel that your eyes are pulling you to see that which is unlawful that which is haram I've helped you I've aided you how? how did you aid me Allah? I've given you these eyes these eyelids to close your eyes think about that anatomy as well indeed the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truly mind-boggling you see all these signs, all these signs. And then after we see all these signs, what do we do? Al-Alam al-Majlisi narrates a very moving hadith in Bihar al-Anwar, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, the narrator of the hadith says he read this in the original Suhuf Ibrahim, the book of Ibrahim, or the Torah, the book of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. In this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to Bani Adam. Allah says, Ya Bani Adam, Ya Bna Adam, Ma Ansaftani. O oh, son of Adam, you've not been fair with me. Why, Ya Allah? Why are we not fair with you? Allah says, Look at how, how I brought you to this life. How you were in the womb of your mother, protected from many dangers. You cannot feel the cold winter, the excessive heat doesn't bother you. Nine months you were resting in peace. All your nourishment directly comes to you. I gave that to you. And then when you were born, I put the rahma in the hearts of your parents to take care of you such that they don't sleep until you sleep. And I gave you this milk in the heat, in the cold weather, it's so warm and pleasant for you. And in the summer, you feel the coolness of it, subhanAllah. Have you seen an infant that's bothered by the temperature of the, of the milk of the mother? Have you ever heard of that? It's always the perfect temperature for the infant. And then I gave you my blessings now that you grow and I gave you the intellect and you can see right from wrong, you fight me with your sins and you disobey me. You have not been fair with me, Ibn Adam. I took care of you. Now that I brought you to your adult age, you come and you violate my laws. You have no respect for my laws. See what I have done for you to bring you to this life. Appreciate that. So indeed, when we look at the history of human civilization, it's truly mind-boggling to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a purpose in this dunya. Just look at our modern history, that becomes very visible to you. How the prophets are the beacons of guidance and they inspired all these civilizations. This is something that we must reflect on. Take life seriously. The atheist tells you this life is some evolutionary accident. Quran tells you no, this is the most serious stage in your existence because you're preparing for that infinite akhirah. These days as we are celebrating the birth of Al-Imam Al-Hasan Al-Mujtaba Salawatullahi Alayhi He has a beautiful statement and I conclude with this. Al-Imam Al-Mujtaba Alayhi Salam it was one year on the day of Eid Al-Fitr. He was passing by and he saw a group of people partying. And you know, sometimes some parties can get very wild, right? So he saw a group of people partying, a group of men were partying on the day of Eid in an inappropriate way. The Imam alayhi salam told them on the day of Eid this beautiful word of advice. The Imam alayhi salam told them, stop, reflect. Do you know what you're doing? And then the Imam tells them, Inna Allah azza wa jal ja'ala shahra Ramadan مِضْمَارًا لِعِبَادِهِ يَسْتَبِقُونَ فِيهِ بِطَاعَتِهِ إِلَى مَرْضَاتِهِ He tells them Allah just gave you the month of Ramadan as a مِضْمَار مِضْمَار in Arabic refers to those horses that have been trained to run and you know what they do to them in the past and probably even now for a while they would reduce their diet, they don't give them that much food, so they lose weight. When a horse loses weight, it's now lighter and it can race in a better way. So they give the horse certain exercises to develop muscles. So they remove the fat 
they allow the horse to develop muscles so that it does well in a race. This is called Madhmar. Basically, these horses that are highly trained. The Imam السلام, says the month of Ramadan is the Madhmar for you. It's the month of training. You've trained yourself for the day of Eid. On the day of Eid, you're partying inappropriately like that. On the day of Eid, reflect, ask yourself, what did I learn? What did I learn from the month of Ramadan? You just forgot the month of Ramadan? Believe me, some of us, when the day of Eid comes, that's it. Ramadan. I'm back to my old habits, to my old ways. I have nothing to do with the teachings of Ramadan anymore. Most Muslims, that's how they're living today. Imagine if someone is in a desperate need to lift their poverty. Let's say you have parents. Parents who are really, really poor and they're counting on you. You study 10 years to become a surgeon. You're trained 10 years to become a doctor. And you're told now after you graduate and you can operate, you have only one day to do surgeries, only one day, 24 hours. Do as many surgeries as you can. For each surgery, you're going to be given a million dollars. You think you're going to be partying on that day? You studied for 10 years, right? Now you have one day to work, only one day. You think you'd spend a minute partying? You would not spend a minute of that day partying. Because you prepared yourself for 10 years for such a day. So that you can work 24 hours, get as much money as you can, and help yourself for the rest of your life. Help, help, help your parents, help your family members. You don't party. The Imam السلام, is telling these people, in the month of Ramadan, you prepared yourself for this day. Now you're just wasting it by partying, not reflecting. And until the next month of Ramadan, this is the Madhmar. You trained yourself for such a day. And believe me, this dunya is like a day. This dunya. Ask the people who are aging, right? Ask a respected community member who's reached the age 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Go to this person. Tell him, Ammu, you're now reaching 80 years old. How long do you feel your life has been? They'll tell you, believe me, it's like a day. I don't even know how life is passing. Can you already believe it? Three years have passed since the outbreak of the pandemic. Three years have passed. It feels like a blink of an eye sometimes. Even though many people went through difficulties. But life is moving at a very fast speed. Are you ready? Make sure that you're ready. On the day of judgment, you don't have time to prepare anymore. You already did your training on earth. On the day of judgment, it's only racing. As-sabiqoon, as -sabiqun. Imagine if on the day of the marathon, on the day of the race, you have these runners who want to achieve victory on that day. They come on the day of the race. They say, okay, bring us a coach. Train me. How can I win? Habib, it's too late. It's the day of the race. Now you want to be trained? You should have trained years before that. The day of judgment is the day of the race. Here in this dunya, you're training for that race. That's the meaning of Mudmar. So the Imam السلام, is teaching us, take this life seriously. Look at the history of your civilization. See the purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for you. Allow yourself to take advantage of these moments to better understand what this life is. To truly bring yourself closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is your creator. He is the one who is micromanaging the entire universe. Feel comfortable with your Lord. Nothing is confused in this world, my dear brothers and sisters. It's only this human who's confused. Have you ever heard from a scientist, ask a physicist, a scientist, have you ever heard from a scientist that there is an atom that's confused? An atom that wakes up one, one morning, the electrons don't know whether they should spin left or they should spin right. Have you ever heard of that? Everything in the universe knows exactly what to do. Allah has inspired it. Trust Him. He knows what to do. Accept His plan. It's you, miserable human being, who's confused. You don't know what's happening. And Adam knows what's happening. Even animals know what they're doing. They're, they have their instinct. They know exactly what to do. Let that inspire you to trust your Lord. Even if there are difficult days, it's okay. Don't worry. 
You cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you know you have a Lord who's managing everything in the universe. So with that, I sincerely congratulate you on the birth of Al-Imam Al-Hasan Al-Mujtaba Salawatullahi Alayhi. And once again, it's my great honor and privilege to be with you again after three years. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all in this uh, blessed month of Ramadan. Allahumma ghfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujibu al-da'awat innaka qadhi al-hajat innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin